Well, uh, Mr. Paul, see, as the emission norms are getting stricter, you know, day by day, so what impact does this have on, you know, lubricant uh, manufacturer like Exxon Mobil? Mm, excellent, excellent question. And, um, well, you know, one of the easiest ways to, to or most direct ways to answer that from a, an Exxon Mobil lubricants perspective is um, our focus on producing and providing energy efficient lubricants to our customers. So by energy efficient lubricants, such as Mobile SHC 600 or the Mobile SHC Gear Series, these are products that have been tested and certified to provide up to 3, 3.6% energy efficiency savings. So by being energy efficient, they use less energy. Less energy being used means less energy that needs to be manufactured, which helps to control emissions, particularly if the source of energy is coal or natural gas. You use a, t a term like smart greases. So what does this smart e exactly refers to? Ah, great, great. Uh, when we say smart grease, what we're doing is we're, we're giving a name to the entire process of developing, manufacturing, applying, providing service to use a grease. Um, so if we look at that entire process, right, it, it starts out with being smart about what our customers' needs are. Our field people will work hand in hand with customers to identify what their lubrication and grease needs are and feed this information back to our technology department located in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Um, greases will be developed there in Paulsboro, New Jersey and trialed within the laboratory. From there, we'll move into our engineering team, which will help us optimize the manufacturing. So not all greases are manufactured alike. And then finally, in the end, the smart refers to the grease itself. Um, if we consider a grease a sponge, it is really a three component system. It's a, a thickener system, it's the oil, and it's the oil that does the lubricating. The grease thickener system does no lubrication, and it's additives. So a grease in essence, needs to be smart. It needs to know how much oil to release at any moment to lubricate with just the right amount of lube. If a grease thickener releases too much oil, it will bleed out and the grease will fail prematurely. If it doesn't release enough oil, it won't be able to provide lubrication mm -hmm. and the equipment will, will fail. So that entire process from customer needs identification through research and development, to manufacture, and then finally to the services that are provided to our customers, that entire process is encompassed by smart greases. Okay. Uh, that brings me to the next question, you know, compared to the earlier range of greases, you know, how this range is different in terms of, you know, formulation, productivity, enhancement, and durability? As I just explained, the, um, the concept of smart being from customer needs identification to the actual application. Uh, the Smart Grease campaign is really addressing that entire process. Uh, so the greases themselves are just but one part of the entire Smart Grease concept that we're, we're advocating with our customers. To what extent the Smart Series is sustainable and helps optimizing energy efficiency? Great, great. Sustainability is a commonly misunderstood word today in the industrial marketplace. Um, this could mean many things to many different people. Uh, to some people, sustainability means bio-derived or bio-based products. To others, sustainability means making better use of my raw materials. Um, so if we look at how a lubricant can provide sustainability benefits to a customer, Let's consider one of our products such as Mobile Lith SHC. These products have um, extremely good structural stability, which means they last very long in application. Additionally, being formulated with a, with a high quality, high performance synthetic uh, base stock, they're able to perform over an extremely wide operating temperature range from as low as minus 40 degrees C to as high as 160 degrees C. So how does this translate into sustainability benefits? If a lubricant or a grease lasts longer, that helps our customers mitigate potential employee 
equipment interaction by not requiring employees to lubricate or maintain that equipment as frequently. By lasting longer, it allows our customers to not have to apply grease as frequently. Since grease is not used up in application, the, more, the less grease that I use, the less waste grease that I'm generating, which helps to reduce the amount of waste generated. And from a productivity perspective, the very essence of a grease is to reduce friction. So having products with, with extremely good equipment protection and friction capabilities help us increase our customers' productivity. Now, um, how do you view the you know, tendency of uh, to over grease? And uh, what are the adverse results of over greasing? You know? yeah. And any you know, steps you are taking to you know, spread the awareness of the same? Sure. Um, you do bring up one of the most common uh, customer issues with greasing, and that is applying too much. Uh, unlike some things, more is not necessarily always better. Um, bearings, one of the primary components that are greased, are engineered designed pieces of equipment. And typically they're engineered um, to have about a 75% total void space fill. Putting more grease in there actually elevates the temperature since the grease now is being churned where the design required it not to be churned. Uh, or to have some free space. So how do, we, how do we inform people or educate? And it really is through advocacy and through our field engineering services team who are out there working with our customers. Educating customers in the right way to relubricate an electric motor, for instance. Mm -hmm. right? it, it's, it's, it's a common misunderstanding. It's not as simple as just pumping grease into an electric motor. You, you need to open the, the drain plug, prior to applying the grease so that the system depressures down. You should always do your, your, your re-greasing when the motor is not running. And then you should start the motor up again with the drain plug open to allow any of the excess grease that may have been put in there to be purged out. Without doing that, you can break the seals, uh, you can have a grease spill, or even worse, you can have grease get onto the windings inside of the motor, which will then cause the motor to fail. So you are right, it is a very common issue. It is one that um, good maintenance practices mm -hmm. and uh, awareness uh, can help resolve. And that is one of the things that we do work with our customers is to make them aware of some of the common pitfalls uh, and how to avoid them. That brings me to the next question. You know, the use of right uh, lube equipment has not seemed to have caught up you know, with the end user segment. When we consider, uh, the application of grease. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are correct that um, using the right equipment is extremely important. Uh, and taking good hygiene when using that equipment is also critically important. It's important that lubricants are kept clean and dry, free of dust, dirt, and other contaminants prior to being applied. Most greases will be applied through a grease gun uh, which requires that the nozzles be cleaned prior to applying the grease. In the case of centralized lubrication systems, such as what one would find in a steel mill or in uh, some mining applications, making sure that the entire central system is uh, well designed, properly operated, and that the grease that's being used is formulated to be moved through a central distribution system is very important. Now, you know, coming to the current uh, economic scenario, you know, the growth in the auto sector seems to be muted. And, uh, you know, there is a degrowth in the mining sector too. Um, on a global basis, I think the, uh, the, the current trends are counter to that. All right, so if, if, we, if we look at the automotive industry yeah. as a whole, um, it is on an uptick. And if we look at mining or steel production, general manufacturing, um, these are all industries that are forecast to have very robust growth over the next decade. And why is this? Um, this is because they serve a basic need of people. Um, my company ExxonMobil issues an outlook for energy each year that takes a critical evaluation of 
the, uh, the general trends in industry and forecasts how energy needs and consumptions will change over the coming years. What, this, what the current issue of the report suggests is that by 2040, we'll have two billion additional people on the planet, that the demand for electrical power will increase by 90%, and that the overall global economy will increase by 130%. So what does this mean? This means that more people will want more power and will be doing more into the global economy. Lubricants will provide a critical step in enabling their basic needs, need to have a house, need to want food, need to want to drive a car. So if we take a much longer view rather than a, than a very short-term view, I think that all of those sectors will uh, continue to grow um, and lubrication will continue to play a very important part um, in helping those sectors grow and in helping those two billion additional people uh, to have the, you know, the things that we, we take for granted sometimes. Uh, how do you look at the growth prospects you know, from uh, the construction equipment sector? Uh, excellent question. Uh, the construction sector will continue to grow, we predict, very robustly over the next several years. Um, this is a sector that meets, again, a general basic need of consumers and of emerging economies, the need to build things, to increase capabilities. Uh, lubricants play a very critical part in the construction sector. Everything from diesel fuel to um, diesel engine oils, all the way through hydraulic oils and gear oils. Um, so combined, uh, we feel that continuing to develop and provide high quality synthetic lubricants to the construction uh, industry will enable our construction customers to be more competitive in their ecosystem than their competitors and will enable them to thrive and to keep pace with the growth that we see for the construction sector. Thanks a lot, Paul. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.